In this somewhat surprising clip, Jon Stewart tears into Kamala Harris in last week's DNC, and it's quite hilarious to watch. I'm Vince for Resist the Mainstream. If you enjoy our content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Why should you subscribe? So that way we can keep bringing you videos like this. And that said, if you saw the DNC last week or you just heard a little bit about it, this clip is for you. It's pretty freaking funny. Let's take a listen. Of course. Of course, an important part of tonight was familiarizing people with the Democratic nominee's biography, a hallowed walk through the trials and tribulations that formed the ethos and spirit of the Democratic nominee. Because up until tonight, eh, it didn't have a lot. Thin on the anecdotes, quite frankly. I mean, I know they didn't have much time, but this is what they were running out there. Vice President Harris came and visited my restaurant. You know, I know you only had four weeks to put this movie together, but come on. You got to do better than... I was working and she walked in. I drove her in an Uber. Come on, the big movers and shakers of the Democratic Party must know her well. She worked at McDonald's. And she greeted every person with that thousand-watt smile and said, how can I help you? What's so funny about this entire exercise is that the Democrat politicians are trying so hard to portray their candidate and their party like normal people, but of course they can't, right? Kamala Harris is a shell. She's a completely fake, empty person. She'll do whatever it takes. No real personality to be had there. So what are the stories involved? She worked at McDonald's. She came into my restaurant. She called me on the phone. Oh, on the front of calling her on the phone. Let's take a listen to the next clip here. I think you have to say that. <laughs> right. When, when you work at McDonald's, or really any point of service occupation, <laughs> how can I help you is kind of the thing. I don't know that the transaction can really take place <laughs> if you do not acknowledge that delicate dance <laughs> of whether or not they will supersize. <laughs> Are there less professional, more personal stories? My phone rings. It's Kamala Harris. She called me. My phone rang again. (laughs) And it was Vice President Kamala Harris. If you're lucky enough to be her friend, she calls you on her birthday. (laughs) She calls you on her birthday, by the way. She doesn't call you on your birthday. She calls you on her birthday. Actually, that is a true story. You know, they keep saying Kamala Harris is fake. I totally agree. That is a story, however, that I absolutely believe about her. She certainly seems like the type that would call you on her birthday. Absolutely. Wait. She calls you on her birthday? I guess so. is very <laughs> on her birthday she calls you hey girl it's Kamala anything you have to say to me that you should have said hours ago Again, like I said, this is an exercise in Democrats, specifically Kamala Harris, trying to act like normal people. And as you can see, portraying yourself as a normal person doesn't exactly go well, because I don't think anyone has anything to say about Kamala Harris that's real, because she's not a real normal person. So they try to do stuff like this. It's very superficial. She called me, guys. Wow. Do you want a medal for that? By the way, this is like night three information. We're three days into the convention and we're like, so she has a phone. (laughs) By the way, is literally one of the only things we knew about her before she took office. We did it. We did it, Joe. She called people. Credit 
Democrats do. The Democrats, on short notice, exploited their newfound momentum and enthusiasm with a display of the breadth and width of this diverse, often contradictory party of Roosevelt. At their convention, they had union leaders and CEOs. They had Democratic Party icons and lifelong Republicans. They had a guy yelling, screw the billionaires, <laughs> followed immediately by a very happy billionaire. Well, that sums it up, doesn't it? The Democrat Party is nothing but a bunch of walking contradictions and, and nothing really of substance to it, right? Because Jon Stewart points out here how they couldn't really come up with actual personal stories about Kamala, like who is she as a person? But still, nonetheless, the more important fact than that arguably is what policies are they running on? Because after the DNC, I still really don't have an idea. All I essentially heard was diversity and Donald Trump bad. So very fitting, I suppose. It's all okay if it's our billionaire. Right. for going to Yale and a bunch of people who went to Yale. <laughs> they had Barack Obama. <laughs> and Jewish Barack Obama. That's always good for politics. You know what really works? A Jewish guy that sounds like a black guy. <laughs> the Democrats had people who prosecuted sexual predators and... <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the most hard-hitting one yet, by the way. There goes that booking. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. I'm certainly glad to see that at least someone in late night is willing to state the obvious, which is despite all of the hype around the DNC from the usual characters about how it was so amazing, it was so inspiring. Actually, what did we really learn from it? Because Donald Trump bad? Yes, we got that part. Celebrity endorsement? I suppose we got that as well. But what did we learn about Kamala Harris? Because as Jon Stewart points out, the personal stories were like ridiculous. But on top of that, what policies did we actually learn? What are the Democrats running on? How are the Democrats going to appeal to people outside of their left wing base? We have absolutely no idea. And in many ways, it's incoherent, right? They got billionaires speaking next to Bernie Sanders. They got Tim Walls attacking J.D. Vance for going to Yale when many of the Democrat speakers literally went to Yale. And of course, as he points out there, pretty hilariously, they have Kamala Harris talking about prosecuting sex offenders next to and truly, sometimes the mainstream media and their propaganda is hard to ignore, but I would venture to guess that for many Americans who actually sat down and watched that convention with an open mind, they have these exact same feelings. Which is that despite what the usual suspects may say about it, that was largely a convention of no substance and made very little appeal to people outside of the Democrat base, which I would argue may come back to bite them in November. But that said, folks, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Vince with Resist the Mainstream. Peace.